Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on March 26th. At least it will be if you're joining me uh, live on the Friday the 26th. I have an early morning meeting today, so I'm unable to be with you. So I went ahead and recorded this in advance so we could at least spend our time together this way. I'm really excited to get to our topic today, so let's hop right to it. So we've been talking about habits this week, and we've been helped by James Clear's book, uh, Atomic Habits, right? So if you're interested in this book, have it in my office, you can borrow it, or you can pick up a copy online anywhere, pretty much. Uh, excellent resource. Uh, let's quickly review what we've covered. All right, so habits function for good or for ill, like compound interest. Two, instead of getting fixated on our goals, we should focus on the systems that we set up or the, the process so we can delight in what we're doing and not get discouraged because we never seem to reach our goals, which is our goals are, are typically not well-defined anyway or well-delineated. So we never have a definitive moment where we've reached our goal. So instead, we're going to focus on the systems, on the process, on, on the, 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 the everyday things we're enjoying as we're doing the habits, all right? Number three, this one was hard. I always hate to hear it too because it, it's, it, it's a real zinger, but we are not our intentions. We are our habits. This goes for you and for me and for your children and my children, your grandchildren, right? You are not your intentions. You are your habits. And that's really important to hear because we like to think of ourselves as our intentions. And that's a little bit of self-deception we've got going on. Okay, number four. We talked about identity-based habits, about who God has made us in Christ and about the type of people we wish to become. So instead of focusing on outcomes, we focus on identity. Who am I and who do I want to become? How would a spiritually mature person act? How would a financially wise person act? And this helps tremendously in developing healthy and godly habits. Really does. I mean, just asking that simple question. How would a wise person do this? How would a healthy person do this? How would a, you know, a financially wise person act? How would they do this? Ask that question and that identity draws you forward. Okay, number five, we talked about this yesterday. We introduced this phrase, drop the block, remember? So we, we take things that are important to us or the things that we want to be important to us and then we turn them into this mental time block, like one of those huge metal storage blocks and we just drop it into our day or into our week or into our month and it occupies its space and everything else has to move around it because it's not going anywhere. It's this huge block, boom, right in the middle, right? It's not moving. You have, to, you have to think of it that way. The things you really want to emphasize, the things you really want to be important in your life, boom, big metal block, right in the middle. Everything else has to move around it. All right, now, today, we're going to talk about bad habits. How do we fight back? against them. So maybe you're a smoker and you want to quit. I just walked by a smoker the other day and she said to me, it's a really bad habit. I know I didn't say anything to her. She just said it was a bad habit. So clearly she felt that way. Or maybe, maybe you're a, a mindless snacker, right? And you want to get control of that. Or maybe you don't like how much time you sit in front of the TV or you scroll through social media. Or maybe, maybe you don't like how much you really like sleep, especially on like Sunday mornings when you want to be up for church. It's just that you never seem to get ready in time and you want to get better at that. Whatever it is, you probably have a few bad habits, at least somewhere in your life, right? At least somewhere in your mind, you can identify some bad habits that you'd like to change. We all have them, right? 
Well, how do you do it? How, how do you go about changing those bad habits? Well, we're going to name one suggestion today. Now, there are lots, lots more. And maybe if we get time um, for Holy Week, we're probably going to stop our habits discussion and focus on Holy Week and then come back later on a couple of weeks later for habits, maybe if we have time. So if you're interested, I advise you to, to read the book because there's lots of suggestions in the book. But we're going to emphasize one today. How do we stop bad habits? Well, one very effective step is this. Call them out. Call them out. Let me explain. So I'll start with an illustration that Mr. Clear uses in his book, uh, The Atomic Habits. He describes uh, the Japanese rail system. He says it's regarded as one of the best in the world. Here's what he says. As each operator runs the train, they proceed through a ritual of pointing at different objects and calling out commands. When the train approaches a signal, the operator will point at it and say, signal is green. As the train pulls into and out of each station, the operator will point at the speedometer and call out the exact speed. When it's time to leave, the operator will point at the timetable and state the time. Out on the platform, other employees are performing similar actions. Before each train departs, staff members will point along the edge of the platform and declare, all clear. Every detail is identified, pointed at, and named aloud. This process is known as pointing and calling. And according to Mr. Clear, it reduces errors by up to 85% and cuts accidents by 30%. I mean, that is huge. You say, why? Why is this so effective? Because, because, as Mr. Clear explains, it raises the level of awareness from non-conscious habit to a more conscious level. Now, you've probably done something like this before. So you're packing for a trip and you say out loud, I've got my socks, my shoes, my belt, my toothbrush. Saying it out loud brings it to the forefront of your consciousness and it makes you aware of it. So putting the kibosh on bad habits starts with bringing the bad habit to the forefront of your consciousness. You have to get it in front of you so that you can see it for what it is. And a point and call system is a great way to accomplish this. Now, you're going to hate me for suggesting this because it has the potential to expose a lot of bad habits that you've probably developed over the years. But here's what you do. Point and call out your bad habits, not your neighbors. Point and call out your bad habits. Mr. Clear gives an example. He says, if you want to cut back on your junk food habit, but notice yourself grabbing another cookie, say out loud, I'm about to eat this cookie but I don't need it. Eating it will cause me to gain weight and hurt my health. <laughs> How about that, right? Let's try another one. If you want to reclaim time that you often mindlessly waste in front of the TV or social media, and you notice that you're headed to the couch or that you are mindlessly flipping through channels or scrolling through Facebook, say out loud, I'm mindlessly flipping through channels, mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. This does nothing to edify my mind, to bless my neighbor, or to glorify God. I should find something more meaningful to do. Say it out loud. Or another, if you want to quit missing worship because you're consistently oversleeping and you find yourself staying up late on Saturday or going to bed with no alarm and you have no plan for Sunday, then say out loud, I'm trying to go to bed without setting my alarm again. I'm setting myself up to miss church again. I'm never going to grow or mature in the faith if I consistently miss church. Say it out loud. Yeah, I know. You already hate me, don't you? But say it out loud. You call out your bad habits. Call it out. Bring it to the forefront of your consciousness. Make yourself see yourself. Make yourself see what you're doing. Mr. Clear puts it this way. Hearing your bad habits spoken aloud makes the consequences seem more real. 
It adds weight to the action rather than letting yourself mindlessly slip into an old routine. He's spot on. Now, this is more than we have time to go into today. But saying things out loud has benefits beyond just calling out bad habits, right? It can help you remember things on your to-do list. It can help you fight back against negative thought loops that can get stuck on repeat in your mind. And we've talked about that before, right? Stop listening to yourself. Start speaking truth to yourself, saying out loud God's truth into your life. And there's a whole lot more we could add to this. And I mean, think about this. There's a reason why we read scripture out loud and sing the hymns out loud and confess the creed out loud and even confess our sins out loud and hear the sermon out loud. There's power in saying truth out loud. Something about that is powerful. Because, you know, lies, they hide in the silence. They love the silence, the darkness. They love to hide. Truth spoken out loud calls them out and then helps us to get rid of them. Now, you may find yourself walking around and saying things out loud a lot, and you may get a lot of looks because of it. You can blame me if you want to. But you just might find that this is the biggest breakthrough in behavior change you've ever found. Maybe, maybe, you just might thank me for it. Let's take a moment to pray. Merciful Lord, we praise you for establishing your church so that your word is intentionally read, sung, and preached out loud, so that truth is spoken out loud, so that lies are exposed. Teach us to learn from your church how to speak truth out loud, especially how to expose our bad, even sinful habits to the light of truth so that we might first see them and second, turn from them and be free from them. Then, Lord, with these bad habits, even sinful habits, put behind us, help us to move forward into godly, edifying habits that will bring glory to you, blessing to our neighbor, and deep and abiding joy to us. We are bold to bring our prayer to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me. Okay, here's a quick rundown of what's coming up. Sunday, Palm Sunday, 9 o'clock church, in person and online. Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Good Friday, 7 p.m. Easter morning, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. with the breakfast in between. We would love to welcome you for all of our Holy, Day, Holy Week uh, celebration, either in person, online. We'd love for you to be a part of it and that the Lord could bless you with his word that is spoken out loud. Look forward to seeing you sometime in the next days. Thanks.